The new look offense for the Atlanta Braves out hit the Phillies on Monday night, but walks by the pitching staff led to a 7-3 to defeat on Monday. We'll cover all of that and get you set up for Tuesday's game where Maximus Freed will take the mound. We'll do all that on today's episode of Lockdown Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, a part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at Shortstop Ball. Check out my bio there to see where I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves in written form over at TomahawkTake.com. I'm also going to be covering the SEC College Baseball Tournament this week as well, so you may see some of that from me on Twitter. Always look forward to that each and every year. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. Make sure you subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to us on YouTube as well. And thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen each and every day. We post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and are free and available on all platforms. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about Monday's 7-3 to loss to the Phillies. Uh, what went right? What went wrong? I did think there were a lot of positives, specifically on the offensive side of things for the Braves, so we'll talk about that. We'll also get into a Tuesday's game where Max Freed will take the mound, and Braves are looking for him to kind of have a typical Max Freed outing and end this little losing streak that the Braves have going on. Well, let's start with Monday's game, that 7-3 to defeat to the Phillies. and Really just going to break down some of the bigger moments in the game. And then I want to talk about the lineup changes and the offense in the second segment. But right off right off the bat, first inning, bottom of the first for the Braves. You're going up against Zach Wheeler. Look, one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. And you got an opportunity to score here. You get three hits in the first inning. William Contreras with a, a little broken bat bloop in the right field that gets a one-out double. And then Ozuna with a hit and an aggressive send by Ron Washington. And in my opinion, a bad send. And look, you you live with all the sins that Ron Washington makes, and I get it, I, and I don't mind his aggressiveness at times. But once Contreras had to hold up to see if Segura was going to catch this ball, you got to hold Contreras at third base. So I thought that was a bad send. He was out by plenty at home plate. And that that was really a crushing blow for the Rays, for the team. You got a chance to get one on Zach Wheeler in the first inning, and you give up an out at home plate. Again, it wasn't even close. That's tough. And and besides that, and you don't know how things are going to play out. We know Travis Darno got a hit right after that that you know would have scored the run rather easily. But you don't always know how things if things will play out the same. But at the very least, you could have had Zach Wheeler have a 30-pitch first inning, 25-30-pitch first inning, but because you give up an out on the base pass, you kind of bail him out a little bit in the first inning, and of course he gets on a roll after that until the Braves finally start getting to him later in the game. So bad send by Ron Washington, tough break in the first inning there as the Braves had an opportunity to get to Zach Wheeler, put at least a run on the board, maybe an opportunity for more and just wasn't able to get it done. And I feel like that's happened a lot here lately when we're going up against good starters, which the Braves have faced a lot of good starters over the week plus now, as they've had opportunities in the first inning to make some noise and just haven't been able to either come up with a big hit or, in the case of Monday's game, giving up out on the base pass. Other thing from this game for me is just the walks, and it's something I've talked about a lot all year long. Uh, Braves pitching is walking far too many batters, fourth most walks in all of baseball. They had eight walks on Monday, and four of those came around to score. Obviously, that was the difference in the ball game. those four runs. To me, the at-bat of the game for Tucker Davidson for the Braves came in that second inning when he walked the number nine batter, Roman Quinn. And look, it was a very good at-bat 
by Roman Quinn. He fouled off some tough pitches, but you decided to go 3-2 slider inside. He took it, a very good take, but he wasn't he wasn't on your fastball. Why not just stick with that? This is a number nine hitter. You don't want to risk walking him unless you're going to throw that slider in the zone. Just keep throwing the fastball. I don't understand that. And I talked about this with Grant McCauley, I believe off air. The fact it seems like every game when the Braves have a game like this, they are walking the, the number nine hitter, the number eight hitter. They're walking the bottom of the order, setting up the top and in this game alone the seven eight and nine hitters all had a walk in this game you can't be doing that and expect to have success you have to be attacking the bottom of these lineups i mean roman quinn's another hitter you know hitting under 200 you know you have to attack these guys you can't be giving up free bases and for me that was kind of the at bat of the game for the braves right there you get roman quinn to pop out you know, who knows what happens next with Reese Hoskins, who ha- also has a great at bat and, and ends up getting the big hit that broke things open early, led to that three run second inning. But for me, it, it's the walk of Roman Quinn. That just cannot happen right there. And speaking of Tucker Davidson, look, not very sharp on Monday, two and two thirds innings, four hits, four walks, five earned, two strikeouts. Uh, again, for me, he just wasn't able to put hitters away. Too many deep counts. Again, talking about the walks. Just he, he could get to two strikes on hitters. He just they fouled off some tough pitches. He just couldn't put them away and ended up walking some guys, giving up some some weak hits. Just the inability to put hitters away to stay, remain aggressive in the zone really hurt Tucker Davidson on this night. Again, I thought the Phillies did a good job of f- fouling off some pitches. Um, and again, the Quinn and Hoskins bat in particular, I thought were two of the biggest at bats on the night. So what happens with this fifth spot going forward? Does Tucker Davidson get another shot on Saturday against the Miami Marlins? I hope he does. And I understand why you may not feel that way after what we saw on Monday. But, you know, I hope he does get another opportunity and the Braves don't just keep bouncing him around. Look, he's your fifth starter. And your fifth starter is going to have games like that, especially against the Phillies lineup that can be very good at times. So I think, you know, you have to just go into it with that mindset that he is a fifth starter. You're not going to get five shutout innings every time that he pitches, but I would like to see him continue to get an opportunity in that spot. And I understand the Braves are in a position where they need wins and they can't sit back and be patient and, and allow a guy like this to continue at the develop at the major league level when they need wins right now. But I think Tucker Davidson, for the most part, will give you an opportunity to win a ball game as your fifth starter and what are the other options right now i think the only other good option is spencer strider and i think he's most needed in the back end of the bullpen right now with tyler matzik down at the moment so you know tukey moeller Anoa, elder you know they've had their chances and it's not like either any of them are dominating at triple a right now so i'd write it out with tucker davidson for at least another start maybe two see if he can continue to be more consistent in the zone and give you more opportunities to win ball games. And then finally, this is kind of my worst from the game, what I'm giving you in this first segment, and then I'm going to hopefully cheer you up a little bit in the second segment with things that went right. But the defensive miscues, particularly in the outfield, I think the biggest one of the night came between your two best defensive outfielders and Adam Duvall and Ronald Acuna, a ball that landed in between the two a ball that Adam Duvall has to catch, and he is the center fielder. He pulled up at the last minute for whatever reason. I don't know if Ronnie said something. He thought he heard Ronnie say something, but he pulls up at the last second and just watches that ball land in between the two. That allows two more runs to score, and that was a devastating blow in this game. Made it a 6 nothing game instead of a manageable 4 nothing game, and that just cannot happen. There's another ball that landed in shallow left. You know, perhaps William Contreras should have got that. It's a tough play for Austin Riley having to run back on that. If the Braves aren't in a shift, it's actually a ball that the shortstop, Dansby Swanson, probably gets to. Look, I'm not going to be too harsh on William Contreras out there playing his first major league game in left field. It wasn't a particularly great outing for him out there, but I didn't think it was as terrible as a lot of people are making it out to be. I don't think he did anything that Marcelo Zuna wouldn't have done if he were playing out there. And I know that's not exactly a high bar 
that is set there. But I, I didn't think it was a, a terrible game. It wasn't great for sure. But the defensive mis miscues in the outfield were not great. On the positive side, I thought Matt Olson made two or three really good plays defensively in this game, and that is definitely encouraging to see as he has not been – the gold glover that we thought he could be. He hasn't been a lot of things that we thought he was going to be so far. I still think he will, but it was good to see him picking it over there with the glove, made a couple of, of great plays, particularly in the first inning, uh, which helped Tucker Davidson escape a jam there. So good stuff from Matt Olson, not good stuff from the outfield on Monday. All right, next, I want to look at the new look lineup for the Atlanta Braves that Brian Snicker rolled out there on Monday and how the offense actually did pretty well in this game and I'll give you some highlights on that next. Our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest odds, news and sports development including this year's NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights and even next season's NFL futures. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. One of the biggest storylines for me on Monday were the lineup changes for Brian Snicker and the Atlanta Braves. Most notably, I already kind of mentioned it, William Contreras in left field, his first major league game in the outfield. Again, not necessarily great. There was a line drive hit to him in the first inning that maybe he could have got to. I actually thought he did a good job of rounding it and keeping the ball in front and holding the hitter to a single there. Again, you had the ball that dropped in between he and Riley and, and left field, a ball that maybe he could have got to. But other than that, I didn't think it was a terrible game from William Contreras. I mean, again, I don't think he did any worse than Marcelo Zuna would do out there, and you definitely want his bat in the lineup. And he batted second on Monday and got a couple of hits. So uh, good for, for Snicker and the Braves. And again, I think Snicker gets you know help putting these lineups together. I don't think it's always his decision. So that's why I say Snicker and the Braves putting this lineup together, taking the hot bat, William Contreras, putting him in that two hole. And he got on base twice. The other big changes in the lineup, Matt Olson for the first time all year, not batting second, obviously with William there, moved down to sixth in the order and Austin Riley down to seven. So some big changes in the lineup there for the Braves. And I thought it worked pretty well. Look, the, the Braves out hit the Phillies 11 to 10 on Monday. You know, didn't exactly result in a ton of runs, only three runs. Again, I think they should have had at least another one in that first inning. So you look at perhaps four runs, you know, you'll take that in a game that Zach Wheeler started just weren't able to still aren't able to come up with some of those big hits. You know, Matt Olson came up with a big spot in the first inning. You know, even Austin Riley, who had a good game later in the game, had a, a, a big spot opportunity to, to get some runs back and cut into that lead. Ronald Acuna, you know, not his best night, came up in a, a big run uh, opportunity uh, and just couldn't come through. So, you know, but overall, the offense, 11 hits. You're going to take that most nights. That's going to be good enough to win you a ball game. I did mention Riley. He had the two hardest hit balls on the night. He had a single that was hit 113.6 miles per hour and a double at 112.6 miles per hour. So that is encouraging stuff for him. Ozuna, Contreras, and Dansby also had two hits each in this game. So that's great to see as well. Everybody in the lineup had a hit except for Ronald Acuna Jr. and Adam Duvall. I thought it was a terrible game for Adam Duvall. The uh, This ended Acuna's on-base streak of 29 games, and Camargo actually robbed him of a hit in his last at-bat, snagging a liner that was hit 97.4 miles per hour to end the game, a line drive just over Camargo's head that he jumped up and snagged. So the Braves were four for eight with runners in scoring positions, just seven left on base. So, again, overall, I thought the offense was much better. Um, they did have 12 strikeouts on the night, which is not great. Would love to see them stay under 10 strikeouts a game. But again, Zach Wheeler was on the mound. He's, he's one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, and he had 10 of those strikeouts over six and two-thirds innings. So uh, again, the difference in this game for me is that the Phillies drew eight walks and the Braves walked just once. I mean, that that truly is the difference. You get a couple more walks from Braves hitters com combined with all the hits that they had, and this is a very – different ball games. So 
that really just was the difference in this one. The walks for the Phillies and the Braves not getting those walks. The Phillies pitching staff not giving up walks. That truly was the difference in this one. But I thought the offense did a really good job. I mean, 11 hits. I mean, we haven't seen the Braves get double-digit hits a lot this season. So that is certainly a great sign to see. And then lastly, the bullpen did a good job as well, I thought. Kept them in the game in relief of Tucker Davidson. Jesse Chavez wasn't fantastic, but again, I thought the defense let him down a little bit. He did. He was able to go an inning in two-thirds. Dylan Lee, <laughs> who got called up as Tyler Thornburg got designated for assignment. Dylan Lee was great on Monday, going two and two-thirds scoreless and hitless innings. So great to see from Dylan Lee. Darren O'Day had a much-needed scoreless hitless outing with two strikeouts, and Jackson Stevens pitched a scoreless inning as well. So in all, those four combined to allow two earned on six hits, five of them by Chavez, and four walks over six and a third innings with nine strikeouts. So good work out of the back, the low leverage guys out of the Braves bullpen to keep them in this game and give them a chance to come back. And look, the Braves had chances in those late innings. They started to get to, to Wheeler in the sixth, seventh innings, and they chased him in that seventh inning. They had opportunities later in this game to chip away and come back. Again, just weren't able to come up with, with that big hit. But I did love the fight that you saw from this team to continue to have opportunities to get back in this game. You know, again, that biggest spot in the game, maybe at the, for the Braves, you know, getting back in it came in that eighth inning. They brought on Connor Brogdon. Acuna came up two on, you know, a chance to really make some noise and, and get back into this game and just wasn't able to come up with a big hit there. But one thing they did do, they forced the Phillies to use their closer. So that is certainly good that they at least forced them to go to some of their better relievers later in the game to hold on to that lead. Uh, hopefully that pays dividends later in this series. But again, I liked what the offense did. I liked what the, the bullpen did. And it was also, you know, I've been looking for a, a blowout game for the Braves to save some of their higher leverage relievers. And I was hoping that it would be a blowout win for the Braves, but at least in a somewhat blowout loss for the Braves, they were able to save, you know, McHugh, Minter, Jansen, Will Smith, Strider, and save all those guys so they'll be ready to go on Tuesday. Hopefully they won't need them because Max Fried is on the mound, and we'll preview that matchup next. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted better gut health and to help optimize my immune system. I've been on it for several weeks, and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It is, has kind of a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to each morning with one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost him $100 a day, so he created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on your own. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews and is recommended by professional athletes and trusted by leading health experts. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and your, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit, visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Speaking of insurance, Max Freed will be taking the mound on Tuesday, hopefully giving the Braves some insurance that a great outing is about to come. He's had a couple of, I wouldn't say rough starts, but it hasn't been the typical Max Freed start we're used to in its last two outings. So hoping for a big outing from him and the Braves need their ace to be a stopper and keep this losing streak streak from continuing. Again, he's been okay over his last two outings, giving up a lot of hits. He walked two in each of his last two outings, which is a surprise based on how he started the season, basically not walking anybody. Bryce Harper, despite the lefty lefty matchup is seven for 30 with a couple of home runs 
off Max Freed. JT Real Muto is 10 for 26 with three home runs. So watch out for those two on Tuesday. And on the mound for the Phillies is Kyle Gibson. He pitched against Atlanta last September, gave up five runs, four of them earned on four hits and two walks over just four and a third innings, but he did strike out eight batters. Matt Olson is eight for 16 with three home runs against Kyle Gibson. So really hoping that Kyle Gibson helps Matt Olson get going here. Gibson has given up eight hits in each of his last two outings and has a 5.87 ERA in May. So hopefully that trend continues as well. And I want to see what they do with the Braves do with the lineup again. I mean, I got to imagine William Contreras is back in there. I hope they kind of stick with the same lineup. I thought they did pretty well. Again, 11 hits. Uh, that will more often than not get the job done. So looking for the Braves offense to continue that on Tuesday and get going and hopefully have a big win with Max Freed on the mound. That will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Again, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.